Guess who's back? Back again. Quasi's back. Yeah, tell a friend. Okay, hopefully everyone out there has had an amazing Thanksgiving weekend. You spent it with your families, ate your faces off, had a great time watching too much football, TV, whatever. But the big thing is you hopefully uh, spent the time with family and friends and you've been thankful for the time you had. I am thankful for you. This is Kung Fu Chronicles. I'm glad you're back. Last week, if you remember, we talked uh, a little bit, delved into... um, the shallow end of the pool on Chin Na, okay? Uh, is it simply just grappling or is there more to it? My crazy uncle Thomas Torres out in Puerto Rico, a branch of Shum Jing Jiao down there, and he's not actually crazy. We just call him that because he tends to ruffle feathers, you know? He tends to kind of shake a little, shake some of the leaves, get you to think a little differently. This week we're going uh, a little bit deeper into the concept of Chin Na. He'll ask the question of what it truly is. And if you're in the Chinese martial arts like myself, whether you're a practitioner, you're a student, you're even a teacher, a master, whatever, you've probably uh, gone through the process of learning about Chin Na or delving a little bit deeper. But we're going to do that. We're going to question what what the art truly is and how it affects us as students, practitioners, masters, etc., etc. Whatever you want to call yourself, this episode's for you. Check it out and do yourself a favor, subscribe below so when you get new videos, they'll pop up on your feed and um, give you suggestions because they're always welcome. Brand new to this, but having a good time just talking Chinese martial arts with you guys, specifically Ying Jiao Pai, Northern Eagle Claw, uh, that's what I'm all about, but martial arts in general have respect for all of it. So glad you're here. Check out the video and see you all very soon. Hey, this is Tom Torres here again from Yinja Pai Village, Puerto Rico. The last time we were together, I said that Chinna has nothing to do with finger locks, wrist locks, and or elbow locks, remember? I'm sure many of you got upset, angry. There was perhaps a lot of consternation because that's the typical definition of of chinna. But uh, hear me out, please. I'm not trying to disturb anybody trying to just share what Ying Jiao Pai teaches concerning Chin Na. That's all. You can take it, cherish it, or you can reject it, and that's fine. But let's try to define what Chin Na means, per se. First of all, many of us believe that Chin Na means joint locking, and it doesn't. It simply means to catch and to hold. In fact, when you look at the ideograms or the characters for Chin Na, they're kind of synonymous. So it really says, hold, hold, catch, catch, seize, seize, which is fascinating. So Chin Na is not saying joint locking. It just means to catch and to hold. Why am I saying it doesn't mean joint locking? Is that important? Well, in a way it is, because it doesn't even say joint locking. Chin Na doesn't mean joint locking. Joint locking doesn't. It, just, it simply means to catch and to hold. That's it. That's the first thing. So we catch and we hold a person. How do we catch? Well, at times we do catch. We hold them against their joints, and that would be a joint lock. But it doesn't mean you always catch someone that way. I can catch someone at the wrist. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm holding him against his joint. I'm just holding him. So that's the first thing. Chin Na does not mean joint locking. In other words, it doesn't always have to be that I grab you against your joint. That I'm pressing my power against your joint, not necessarily. No. Perhaps I'm just holding you in such a way where, in such a way that you can't move, but I'm not going against your joint, against the mobility of the joint. Right? So chin nod does not mean joint locking. Until next time. <laughs>